Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for joining me. This will be a real quick video, it will be about installing VMware's new vCenter server version 8. Now this will be a real quick process, I'm just going to show you how to do it, quotes, the right way, or at least for me a bulletproof way that will not fail along the process. Now there's several ways you can do it, I'm running this uh, installation in an active directory environment and so it is recommended i have already done it i've already created a dns a record and uh, i've chosen a name and an ip that i will assign uh, uh, this v vcsa uh, installation if you're running in an active directory uh, domain environment go ahead and pre-create a dns a record I know that some home labbers use, for example, Pi-hole as their DNS, and you can also create A records in Pi-hole DNS. Regardless, your environment is yours, you know it. It is recommended, not mandatory, to create a DNS A record. Now, let's jump over to the process. Now, you will need to grab a, a, a VCSA version 8 ISO. You will also need, preferably, uh, an ESXi version 8 virtualization host already installed and ready to receive the installation. So again, that's a topic for another video. We are now focusing on the installation of the vCenter uh, VMware appliance. All right, so I've already got the ISO mounted on my workstation and I've already created a DNS A record and I can verify that it is indeed working if I run NS lookup. I'm in a domain environment, so my domain controller will be the one that will be replying my DNS queries. And I'm going to type the name of the A record I created, which is TMO VCSA. And indeed, I get a reply TMO VCSA and the IP address, meaning that the A record is being is created successfully. So, over to the ISO, I'm going to browse over to VCSA UI installer, Win32, and I'm running the installer.exe. Alright, so you'll see that there are two phases to this installation. I'm going to walk over both of these phases. So let's click on install. By the way, the process is not very different from vCenter version 7 installation. You can also use guides on that version as well. So let's click on next. Let's agree to the terms. Click on next. Now I'm asked for the IP address or host name of the ES6i server, the host server that will be hosting this VCSA virtual machine. So let's give it my specific VMware host and of course the username and password, the local username and password of that uh, ESXi server. Click on next. I'm going to click on yes. All right, so the name, this name refers to the name of the virtual machine, but I usually keep those in line. So I'll type VMO, TMO, sorry, VCSA. I'm going to set a root password. All right, click on next. The deployment size is tiny in, in my environment. This VCSA will be uh, terminated after this video is over. Let's create the, the virtual appliance on this data store. And for me, I would like to enable the, the thin disk mode. That's great. Now, we are, we are now su uh, supplying network information for the virtual machine itself. So let's select a network. For me, it will be servers. Now, this list of networks is taken in, from inside the ESXi host we have supplied in, in, in the previous steps. I'm going to select a static IP address, FQDN, 
is the FQDN written right here in our NS lookup output. So I can actually copy and paste right here. Now it's not mandatory, but it's definitely recommended. Let's type the IP address that we have assigned in DNS and the subnet mask. Default gateway, of course. DNS servers. All right, moving on. We are now ready to complete stage one of the installation. We have created actually the virtual machine uh, appliance itself, the virtual machine with the IP address and the FQDN. This will be stage one. I'm going to pause the recording right here and we'll continue once we are ready to start stage two. All right, guys, so the first stage of this installation is complete. We are ready to continue to stage two. Up until now, we've only configured the virtual machine itself, the infrastructure. Now we are going to actually configure the vCenter itself. So let's click on continue. Now click on next. I, I, I recommend that you do synchronize with uh, NTP time servers. Again, I'm using an Active Directory environment. So my domain controllers will be my NTP servers, but you can also use an external NTP server like the Google NTP server. SSH access, I'm leaving deactivated, but this is how I recommend that you do uh, uh, the, the configuration. By the way, I forgot to mention, don't be surprised if stage one takes a good 10, 15 minutes to complete. It takes time. Don't panic. Don't cancel it. Let it work. All right. I forgot to mention. All right. The next step is to configure an SSO configuration. I'm leaving the default vSphere.local as my sort of a local SSO domain name, although I am going to attach the, v the vCenter server to my Active Directory environment, but that's just backstage, sort of. Let's set a password for the uh, vSphere local administrator account. This will be the account we will actually log in with when we start uh, configuring the vCSA web interface. All right, click on next. I'm not going to join uh, the customer experience program. Click on next. And now we are ready to complete stage two. Again, this will also, uh, this might take 10, 15, 20 minutes to complete. Don't be alarmed. Don't panic. Don't try to force quit uh, or something like that. Let it work. I'm going to pause the recording and resume, and resume it again once this stage is done. All right, guys, so the second stage is also complete. And this took, again, it can take uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes, depends on uh, the speed of your environment. If, you, if you're installing the VCSA virtual machine on a mechanical hard drive and not an SSD, this will take longer, of course. And also give it a minute before you jump over to the URL, because sometimes, especially if you install it, if you install the virtual machine on a mechanical hard drive, it takes a little bit time for the virtual machine to actually be uh, prepared and to load the web interface or the web server. So at this point, we can at least try to log in to our new vCenter server. All right, looks like everything is in order. So let's try to launch the vSphere client. All right, so now we log in with the administrator account we have created or configured during the stage two uh, configuration wizard. All right, guys, great. As you can see, this is the VMware vCenter server web interface 
from here you can start creating a data center creating a cluster adding ESXi servers as your virtualization hosts everything except for the minor cosmetic differences is exactly the same now here's a little trick now I only recommend doing it in let's say lab environments we can we can see that now our connection is not secure because we are using a self-signed VMware certificate but we can mitigate it again I only recommend it in non-production environments we can grab the URL right here let's open up a new window this is exactly where I wanted to land it. You can see that we can, we can download the trusted root CA certificates. Right click on this link, save link as, and download the zip file. Here it is, extract it. And now in this folder, you will see, go to the, uh, according to your uh, operating system, I'm using Windows, so I'll go into Win. Right click on this file right here, click on Open, and click on Install Certificate, and choose Local Machine. Place this certificate in the trusted root certification authorities and go through the entire wizard i'm not going to do it because this vcenter server will probably be uninstalled after this uh, video is over but then after you you insert your the certificate into the trusted root certification authorities you should restart your uh, computer and then try to log in to your regular to the vCenter server that you installed and this time you will not get the red warning of an, an unencrypted connection in fact i have done the same thing in my lab vCenter server let me try to show you here it is and as you can see i'm getting a secured connection since this is a lab environment i don't i don't mind doing it in a production environment get a valid certificate from a certificate in provider and install the certificate into the vcsa appliance but that's a whole other topic i hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it useful and i hope to see you all in the next video bye everyone